Good morning, I've got my solar power siphon system filling the water for me this morning. We are back to a pasture where pond access is not directly accessible, so it's, it's actually fenced off. You'll see the fence back there, but so I've got my siphon system going back up and running for getting the pond water to pasture. I'm just gonna be doing this until we're moved through this pasture to another more direct watering source. I think it took me about 15 minutes to rig it all up once I had all the materials on hand. I had to run up the pasture for the shorter hose, so I would have done that in advance, it would have been faster, but I think it took about 15 minutes to get the battery hooked up to the pump, hook up to the hose and then put in that in that water and then from there it's been like less than five minutes to fill it a 40 gallon 40 gallon tank so so in all this probably takes me about 20 minutes if I've got all the supplies on hand I keep the pump and all that supplies in a plastic bucket so that's pretty easy to retrieve and then there's about a I think it's a 12 or 15 foot hose that I use to get from the pond to the trough. And so 20 minutes start to finish to get them watered. 40 gallons will probably last them at least five days. The sheep don't drink a lot of water. It's odd, but I just kind of think it's what, it's kind of a, just a different difference of animals. But yeah, they don't drink a ton, especially during, during winter, but they do drink a lot during summer. Just a heads up. So inside of this, I actually created a whole video on the solar powered siphon system. I bought a solar power energizer for a 12 volt battery. Then a really small pump. Uh, I think it's actually made for like pools or something, but working out pretty well. All right, out here on the range today, and rule number one as a shepherd or shepherdess is that if you see a hole, you need to plug it. So there is a hole over here that I came out to check on the sheep and about one had half of its body through. And this is not our pasture over here. So if they were to get through, that would be embarrassing and bad because it's happened before and I don't want it to happen again. No, probably will. But anyways, I've got this hog panel scrap going on here and I am patching that area of fence again. Okay, so what I am doing is I'm just using some of the high tensile wire that I actually use for the electric fencing and I'm cutting it into small pieces and then I'm going to use some of the scrap hog paneling that we have piled up to plug this hole and I'm going to lay that hog paneling against our existing barbed wire fence and attach it to the barbed wire fence using these pieces of high tensile wire. So this is essentially how we initially fenced for sheep. We attached a hog panel. It wasn't the individual hog panels, but it was a roll um, hog paneling. And we just attached it to our existing perimeter fence using some high tensile wire. Now we fenced this around the entire 32 acres that we have going on here, uh, but there just are a couple of holes where maybe it was a break in the roll of hog paneling. So occasionally we'll just go in and patch it up with some scraps that we have.
All right, big surprise, she brought again. But the, it was my fault this time. The charger is not working, so I think it's time for a new one. When I started this with in with this charger, I started in because I was working with what I had to get the system going for rotational grazing. I didn't even know if rotational grazing was gonna work. I didn't even know what I was doing, so I just went to whatever I had. And now that I know that rotational grazing works, I think it's time to up my game and get a bigger charger. This one is, it's kind of like on again, off again. The solar charger, 0.22 joules. I mean, it's done a really good job, but it's kind of been given out lately, so. I think I might go with a, either a bigger solar unit, which are kind of, um, they're kind of expensive. Or I may just see if I can get a power line going from um, like a fixed power point and getting a really powerful charger, like maybe five or six joules, something like that. Um, but I think it's time. Somebody was like, well, go ahead and eat the escapees. And I, I heard that and I've heard, you know, about culling for escape artists and such, but number one, I'm not ready to do that right yet. I've been managing this flock for about eight months and previously I had never managed livestock before. So I wanna make sure that I have given myself at least one year of management um, before I start culling animals. I wanna make sure it's the animal's fault and not mine. Um, number two is that I don't have an appetite for that much lamb because they all escape. All right, so they are back there. That is not the pasture they're supposed to be in. But the good news is I think that they are coming back. So this is the first. They're coming back to their paddock with me just calling. We're having a breakthrough moment here, guys. So what happens is they know when I'm calling them to fresh pasture, and they know when I'm calling them back after they've escaped. And typically, they don't um, come back when I'm calling them from an escape. But today they are, so. No, but they'll always come when they know I'm shifting paddocks or I've got feed for them. So I do have a little bit of feed that I'm gonna get in the trough. Oh, this is really good. I think I'll call it a day for sheep farming in the USA.